Hey, it's the old man here. Oh. And we got fresh straw. I got lady. And uh, I'm still testing. In the last video I did, I used the back side of the camera. And you couldn't see when you're videoing. And I kind of like that. I don't know. I can't tell what lady's doing. I couldn't even see if she was in the picture last time. So I'm still experimenting. Uh, still looking at the guineas, too. He's coming. Come here, buddy. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of wanted to wrap up a little bit about Lame Deer, Montana and move on to the great flood of 1990. Uh, last couple notes about Montana. We had an outhouse that was out behind the house, and it was a defective drain system on our house we rented, so we used that a lot. And uh, on the floor was a box of straight pins, and somewhere in the wall was a hornet nest. So as long as you went there early in the morning, everything was cool. There was no action. They would just slowly move around. And uh, being they were in that kind of a mode, pretty soon stick pins were stuck in them. And I'm not a sadist or anything like that, but it was, uh, they've caused me enough grief, so I don't mind passing it along, I guess. And uh, yeah, the view from that place, it was uh, beautiful. Rolling hills, uh, the door, I don't remember if we even had one. Uh, but it was nice. And you know what? Lady almost got killed about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Her and the dogs fight through the fence, and Lady will stick her neck out that far, and there's two dogs out there, and I don't know why she's not dead, because it's, it's, they could wring her neck in a second. And I actually broke them up, and she bit me just 10 minutes ago for what a goose can bite. But she got in the moment, and then it wasn't down. Yeah. I don't know why. God's grace or dumb luck, I guess, that she's around. <laughs> so back to Lame Deer. Um, the trinkets at the, that car dump. Um, one of the things we saw were headbands, I'm guessing, off of hats, maybe about this big, with the little tiny BB type beads. Um, very ornate, beautiful looking things. And we put them in our pocket. And by the time we got home, uh, that string that was. 50 years old and been through the sun and the cold and everything just dissolved so by the time we got home it was just a pocket full of beads I feel bad about that I wish we had the foresight to uh, uh, I don't know glue it to a piece of wood it's cool stuff you see them guys yeah there they go yeah that's their side of the shack there um, I talked about the old road I talked about all the jobs we did I talked about um, the people, the cops. Uh, one night, Ed invites these two blonde girls in for coffee or something. And uh, I don't know how old they were. And uh, within 15 minutes, the cop shows up. And he's got hair down to his waist. He's got a big revolver on his hip. He's got a big badge on his jean jacket. And he just knocks on the door and he goes, hey, girls. Let's go and called them by name and they got in the cop car and left and not another word was said. We never saw them again. Um, it was easy enough, I guess. But yeah, he uh, he fit the part. He looked like a frontier Indian cop. Um, it was a whole different ball game from SeaTac, that's for sure. And, and uh, you know, we stayed low key and, and out of the way and, and never had any problem with the cops. Um, Drinking and dumb was kind of common. They didn't, you know, as long as you didn't hurt someone, you know, people got away with a laugh. We actually came home one night, um, liquored up, I suppose, and uh, behind our house was a great big track. It might have been a quarter of a mile long. Our landlord was going to make an RV park, and as far as he got was this big oval track. And so on occasion, we would drive around the truck on the way home and race around it and do some sliding and all that stuff. And uh, I think Grandy was driving that night. And we come around the corner at the far end and he spun out and there was probably a three foot drop from the track to the road, or, the, or not the road, but the inside of the track. And when it got to the point where 
there's no sense in trying to stop, so we just goosed it, and we ended up knocking out the landlady's chicken house fence. Fiasco. Chickens, uh, hole in the fence, landlord's up, aye, aye, aye. So that Sunday, we built a new chicken house, and then it was just everyone laughed it off. It was no big deal. No one was mad. She just accounted it all to drunk kids, and, and we made our made peace about it. Um, thank God I lived through all that stuff. You live in a place where there's no speed limit and the drinking age is 18. It's a bad combination, I think. Hi, lady. Come here. Come over here a little bit. Come here. Come here. So, with that, I'm going to wrap this up. I kind of want to make it short because I want to uh, see if I can use the front screen and do the video. Like I said, that last one, I couldn't see myself, couldn't see lady, couldn't see guineas. Um, so with that, enjoy the weather, and uh, what do you say, lady? You want to say anything? Huh? Huh. Huh. Come here. Let me see if I got one left. I was giving her some dandelion earlier. That's what she won't want it now. Come on. Likes lettuce more at three bucks a pop. Okay. See you later.